What's going on, everybody? My name's Chris, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. With pretty much no sanity left, well, we have about health or half our health left. I thought I was, like, low on everything. We defeated a boss in the last episode! We gained access to the ruins of something, I don't know. The Guardian of Zelototh, vanquished, and, and the stained glass that kept it hidden, lying in pieces. The essence of Chattergra, which is the red god, and we we're fighting, like, the green god, you know... Not, they're not gods, they're, it was a guardian, really, uh, is now liberated. The magic beckons to Peter, calling him. He approaches cautiously. Should Peter retrieve the essence of Chudderga? I don't think, like, you know, I, there's, I could really answer no there, since the game would just continue. <laughs> Peter reaches out for the artifact, but pulls away as he feels its corrosive magic closing on his hand, wrapping his hands in a shred of clo clo clothing? Clothing? Clothing. Duh. Wow, I'm tired. Clothing? Really? That's what I thought that word was? <sighs> he carefully lifts the artifact from his resting place. Peter has acquired the essence of Chattaga. So that means we now have two out of the three. Well, at least from the guys we play 69 years later. <sighs> hey, and there's that me. That was how I came by <gasps> it. I know it sounds crazy, but there you have it. The only oh. proof I have is that statue. It's a strange one. Mr. Grinch. I've seen one like it before. You have? Yes. Mantrock. Very rare, though. Very obscure. The of Mantrock. I've had experts take a look at it. And none of them know what it is. And you do. I'm somewhat of an expert on these things myself. An interest I developed a long time ago while I was a young man. Then you should... When I was Lord a young boy. I have no interest in it. I am sure it's the cause of my sleeplessness. Keep thinking about it, as if it's calling out to me. Then a drink, perhaps, for the gift, for an unusual objet d'art. So I wonder where he put that. It's got to be somewhere. It looks like just library. I wonder if it's in the. Uh, I wonder if I have to do that puzzle in the library now. You know, with the with all the turning knobs, and I have no idea what the heck it was. I like how you always get this cutscene of her slowly looking up. Having stopped reading, Alex discovers a small uh, penny tapered to the back of Peter's chapter page. Well, how'd that get there? What the magic? Uh, I don't know what that's supposed to really do, actually. That's kind of unfortunate. God, while drawing a stack of human bodies, each was once meant into place. What twisted sight could have executed this drawing? Though disturbing, it is meticulously rendered down to the subtlest detail. The precise anatomy of fractured bones and convulsions of spines and ribs entwine into a mesmerizing sight. I wonder if, we're ever, if like, the last thing I really have to do is get that last ruin, right? I think that's right. Am I losing my sanity right now? Or is it just on the screen because it's low? I feel like I'm losing my sanity right now. Uh, oh, hold on. I'm trying to recover. I was like, wait, what am I trying to do right now? Let's recover. And hopefully, like, you know, all those scary noises will go away, man. Yay. Okay. So is there nothing in here for me to do? Doesn't look like it. A lucky penny. What's that going to do for me? Hmm. I wonder if I could use it to, like, somehow pick the lock to the basement of this place. No, for like when we started doing these chapters, I thought we'd be playing as characters from the portraits of the mansion. That hasn't really come to play yet. I wonder if it ever will. Oh, help hello. Me. Please help me. Is that a bad guy now? Oh, she's just going back to sweeping. I can't get the blood out. <laughs> what? How did? What? <laughs> How did that maid have to- Why did she die? How come she had the key? How come she can't get the blood out? There's so many unanswered questions. I don't understand. Okay, so that's clearly the key to this. Very clearly. Okay, um, well. Let's go down to the basement and probably die. Hey! Oh, yeah, right. Shotgun shells. Yay! Have I got a shotgun yet? I don't think I have. Uh, shotgun shells! Yay! I did it! All by myself. 
The safe is large and old-fashioned, made in the days when security was derived from heavy metal construction rather than secure locking mechanisms. It doesn't look like it would be too difficult to break its combination. If only Alex had a stethoscope to hear the tumblers more clearly. Do I have a stethoscope? I don't know. We play as Alex so rarely that it's like, I never remember what she has. Nope. I do not have a stethoscope. Wouldn't it just be highly convenient if I just found one right now? Put back your shotgun and hangs from the plaque mounted on the dusty wall. Well, duh, pick it up, asshole. Would guns like that really actually work? I feel like since I've been sitting up there so long, they would, well, they wouldn't rust, but I mean, they would get all dusty and stuff and gross and yeah. Stethoscope, where are you? Are you in here conveniently? What's this? A brass framework hangs from the ceiling, cradling the globe in the observation observ observatory above. It seems to have been modified now some part of elaborate locking mechanism. Does that help me at all? I don't think so. Okay, so we clearly gotta get light to shine down into there, and then maybe that opens the hatch or something. The hatch! That's, it looks like there's something right above my head, doesn't it? I guess just a different shade of the ground. It's weird, because it's different from the rest of the ground. I wanna drain that well so I can go down to the Forbidden City and probably get myself killed. Okay, mailman just walked up to my door as per usual when I'm recording. It's weird. Every single time I record. Okay, that's a, that's a blatant lie. I swear, most times when I record, it just that just happens. Detail. Stockpile of Edward's port. One of his many eccentric titties. His taste for port went hand in hand with his appetite for knowledge. No doubt his quests were fueled by this little cachet. That's all that was. Really? They just have crates from who knows how long. Very, very long time ago. There's, there's, there's gotta be something down here, right? Oh, oh, there we go. A fuse box and circuit breaker are arrayed, situated upon the wall. All but one of the fuses are intact. The absence of one is suspicious until it's replaced by a circuit. Clean. Fuse useless. I don't know why I'm yawning. Alex jams a lucky penny in place of the missing fuse. Who, man? <laughs> Who would have figured that's what it would be? Oh yeah, the bat room. That's upstairs, right? Pretty dang sure that's upstairs. I forgot that room ever existed. It's about time we're playing in the actual mansion. It's so one thing that I don't really, well, there's a few things I don't really enjoy about this game, I guess, but that's like the one main thing I don't really, like my one main complaint, is that we don't really spend enough time in the present and in the mansion. I wish there were some like, you know, greater diversity of things, they're not really things to do. What is this? It's like a weird sheep horsing. That's not what it's. Oh, it's, it's a horse, I think. It's a horse, of course. It's weird that the C button doesn't do anything in this game either. It's not a thing I just noticed. Like literally just now, the C button is just unneeded. Pretty sure it's a GameCube exclusive game too. So it's weird that you know if it was like a PlayStation and GameCube game, I could or yeah, then I could understand why they might not use a C stick because you know I don't know how the buttons correlate with PlayStation. An antique medicine cabinet hangs on the wall. Its wood is stained from years. Of use in the ambient humidity of the room. So, Alex, open the cabinet. Heck yeah! Ah! Wait, what? I thought this was a chapter page. Oh. Journal of Maximilian Roivis. Maximilian Roivis! Sure, let's check it. Um, page from Maximilian Roivis' journal. It reads, I sought, a, I sought to love all yet. Now, love causes me pain and suffering. I have learned to fear nothing, although it is nothing that I fear most. All that were loyal to me now number among my worst enemies. How come the, I don't understand why these pages of these journals are just lying about like some of them are hidden which makes sense like behind old pictures and all that because I mean I can understand that being placed down um, hidden away in the mess camera this chapter yeah okay a legacy of darkness I can understand like things behind hidden behind ancient portraits that maybe no one's moved for like hundreds of years but, like that was just on top of a chest <laughs> I guess the ghosts are putting it you are not free to leave this plane until you complete a task planes. You are to hunt and kill the master of this house. Do this one thing and you will be free. Else fear the wrath of Zelotov. Are we going to play as Maximilian again, even though he's locked up in the nut house? But that's who you we were before, right? When Everything we is complete for your arrival, master. Now we must wait for the planets to align. And that is not too many years from now. Another Roivus has crossed our path. This time, we will not be so merciful. Mercy has no place in this world. It has all 
only a place for me. He will meet such a horrible death that the rest no, of the world will never set foot in his house again. Pray to me that they don't. Pray to me anyway. <laughs> pray to me! No, but seriously, please pray to me. That's what I got from that. Alright, let's use it. Let's go into the next chapter. Who's this? <gasps> Is this Grandpa? <gasps> We're finally playing as him? Maybe? My education in psychiatry did not prepare me. I would love to see how Freud's view of his mother would change with the knowledge of Chaturga. How Skinner would incorporate Zelotath into his behaviorist theories. How Jung would accommodate Ulioth into his theory of the collective unconscious. Like my ancestor, Maximilian, I too had an interest in my family tree. As a psychiatrist, I believe that science could provide answers into my family's sordid, bizarre past. It was with great excitement that I began my search. The mansion's history was filled with my colorful predecessors. Everything from convicted and hung witches to committed madmen each laying their own peculiar mark on its character. I intended to find their secrets. I don't know why I didn't see this coming that we'd be playing as him eventually, but I didn't. This part of the library is reserved for the entertainment of the house's more scholarly guests. A simple yet elegant layout affords quiet drink and conversation. That's- I, I love how we're playing as him now. I hope you get to learn pretty much everything about him, like how he was murdered and exactly what happened here. Journal of the Family History rests on the mantle as it is used recently. Historical Journal. Yay, I did it. This is really cool. I'm really happy this is a thing we're doing now. Ah, the, the door that was here before is gone. So that's, that's a recent construction. I don't know how far into the past this is. Like, is this right before he died? So is this, like, pretty much happening, like, just before Alex came into the house here? These books contain the history of the Ravis family, genealogy, birth and death records, deeds and rights. The Ravis history is a troubled one. As Mediterranean immigrants, the early Ravis was shunned by other settlers in North America. Suspe suspected of witchcraft, the Ravis were convicted during the witch hunts, forcing them into hiding. As memories fade until the Ravis rebuilt their lives. Hmm. Silly people thinking witches are real. <laughs> Adorable. But not really, because that's actually pretty sad. Innocent people had to die just because of freaking evil gods trying to murder me all the time. Jeez. What? <laughs> Maximilian Pegasus! I mean, uh. You know who I am, Edward. Although yeah, you are duh. doing your best not to believe it, I am who was. Maximilian Roivas, your ancestor. I died in an asylum after trying to warn the world. The pain and anguish I felt in that cell has empowered me to linger after my death. I must complete what I started, Edward. The darkness must be stopped, or all of humanity may end. That's a really cool thought. Talking to your ancestors, like people you've never met before, but from your family. To the thirty-third minute of the third hour. Three, three, three. Okay. That, you know, everyone always talks about like what I would do to have one last conversation with my mother, and yeah, that is obviously like completely legitimate and all that. But that would be really freaking cool to have a conversation with like your ancestor, or, like someone from hundreds of years ago. Wouldn't that be? I've never thought about that before. That's <laughs> liquid courage. That's funny. Let's see what that does. Small flask of the old sauce. Liquid liquid courage. A magical elixir to power one spirit in the face of adversary. Bottoms up. Okay, I was going to say, is that sanity or magic or health? Sanity it does make the most sense. So, old musty book bound in dry, dusty leather. This book covers the early history of the Royvis family, dating back before the settlers and the lad. There appears to be something crushed between the pages. Yeah, I'm going to get it out. Men in hand of the claw. Oh, dang it, we're gonna have to find the rest of it now. Edward's favorite reading chair uh, faces a healthy warm fire. No doubt, many cold nights are ahead. 
Yep. Alright. A looming grandfather clock sits ominously in the corner, gazing on the empty room with an almost patriarchal air of its own. The ghost asked Edward to set the clock, but there are no hands on it. Edward must find the clock hand so he can set it properly. Alright. Hall of freaking Luya. Could I... Okay, I really hope that I remember that it's 3 through 3, although that should be easy to remember. Um, okay, we don't... We, there's nothing to examine there, thankfully. So I don't want to have to make check all those again and make sure there's nothing new. <laughs> hmm. So i got to find the hour hand, then. Of course it's the hour hand that's going to be more difficult to find, because, you know, it's smaller. Alright, let's start. So let's handle one side of the house at a time. Portraits, and eh, yeah. They'll still say the same thing. Oh, this is the bait. Can I go in here? The door is locked. Okay. We don't have a key, right? No, we just have the flask and the book. On the map. On the map. Ooh, what was that? Okay. Thick layer gram in the window prevents Edward from looking out to the garden. Despite the efforts of the servants, Edward hires. The magic continues to sink and decay. That's sad. Ooh, I don't seem to be able to run very much. What do you say? Are you going to say, like, oh, with a look at this me? As Edward nears the servant's thoughts, mumbling to herself and ask if uh, he thinks the weather will clear up before the solstice. Edward finds the reference to the solstice rather odd of plenty of significance. Probably when the planets align, which probably means that God makes it into the world. I mean, that God. I don't mean, like, just God. Uh, okay. That says the same thing. Well, you know what? Well, let's see if we can examine this first of all. No, we can't. I already feel like I'm missing something. Oh yeah, what was the spell we just got? I should probably check out what that was. Uh, spell. Oh yeah, I don't have the Tome of Eternal Darkness yet. Right. What's that, ammo? Yay, revolver ammo! With no one living in the house for a long time, it's no wonder the pantry is so empty. Edward lives out of the refrigerator, so to speak. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. What else do we have here? Anything? Pots and pans! Uh, Grand Oy's kitchen fireplace with all the amenities of modern life has been used in quite some time. Holy crap, I totally thought that was a dead guy! Oh my good lord. Can I talk to you? If everyone else is Edward's present, come in some more weather. Idle chit chat. Yeah, there's the fridge. <laughs> Such a big room. It's, it's, this fridge looks really tiny. I don't want to talk to you again, you silly butt. You awkward conversationalist, you. Uh, okay, so there's nothing over here. Got kind of noticed. You just gotta walk along the walls and all the sides of the furniture and all that just to make sure you can't examine anything. Oops, full. The piano's open at this point in time. Edward has never learned the piano, but that has never stopped him from hammering away at the keys now and again. It's very therapeutic. Perhaps one day he'll learn it properly. Probably not. Probably because he's gonna die. Spoilers. Well, not really. Look at the view from the outside. I think this is the first time I've actually seen the outside view from here. It looks so cool. Oh, man. They're giving me up a lot here. That's scary. Wait. Is it just... Puttering around with a crockery, the servant informs Edward that the tables have been set for him just as he likes. Good. Because if it wasn't, I would stab him with a sword. Antique cavalry saber mounted on display stands gleaming in the moonlight. <laughs> I wonder what, like why I'm picking all this up. Like, I mean, it makes sense for me because obviously... Is this like a secret room or something? What was that about? It makes sense because, like, it's obvious... I, like, me, the player, knows that, you know, I'm gonna be finding zombies eventually. But, like, Edward doesn't know that. This is just a normal day for him. A bizarre decorated mantle frames this fireplace adorned with odd sigils arranged in circular fashion. It is unlike most of the art in this house. Perhaps it has some special significance? Perhaps, perhaps indeed. Uh, there we go. Doesn't let me examine anything about that, really. Uh, no, can I just still examine that? In other words, no. Hey, those look like those teapot handles could totally be used as an hour hand. Just kidding, they probably can't be. Okay, let's go upstairs now. Oh, you know, I gotta end off this episode. It's taking far longer than I thought. Oh, can we take the hour hand from this clock? Let's take a look and then end off the episode. Detail a large car carriage clock sitting on the foyer table. Beautifully crafted, it appears to be stuck with its hand permanently set to 3333. Seriously, no one's fixed that yet? 
Oh, wait a minute. No, it was stuck. We set that as when we were out before. We can't talk to this dude. Server knows that is present. Okay. Alright. I'm going to end it off there. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Let's Play Eternal Darkness. Signing is Requiem Blind. In the next one, we will explore the upstairs area and hopefully find the Hour Hand. <laughs> if you enjoyed, please leave likes already. My name's Chris. I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye!